Okay guys, so the first thing we're gonna wanna do is we wanna Google Easy Equities. You can check the link. So yeah, so this is their homepage. You can go through it a bit. You can go ahead, hit on the register, create this profile, let's say like username, and then see, okay, cool, it's not taken. Add in your email. Um, we can Google suggest a password here for us and click next. Okay, and as you can see, they're not asking for any forms yet, which is great. Here we can go and add your name, surname, country of residence. Now, yeah, as I said, you can sign up from anywhere in the world with easy equities. The only thing is, if you're not um, a South African citizen, you won't get access to the JSE. And as far as I know, the Australian one also, you'll only get access to the USD market, uh, nationality, So how did you find out? You'll say, for instance, from a friend, hi friend, I'm your friend. Please do your boy a solid and add his referral number over here. So that just means I get a little present and you also get a little present once you start investing. So thanks for that in advance. And yeah, so then read your little, I hereby confirm your contract say i confirm and what you do is you hit register so what you can see here this is your dashboard now you can see your current account access is demo czar and demo usd and pretty much what that means is you'll see the demo czar and the demo usd that's your paper trading account you can say here complete profile individual or you under 18 and then there they make the little and they'll tell you exactly what you need to fill in so you can save and proceed and over here you're just going to complete the rest of your account and save and proceed there we go Alrighty. next part is your address okay then your identity kyc no idea what the kyc stands for but um We'll just say, what would you classify as your primary source of income? For me, it was savings slash other, but in this case, it would be salary. Um, and then this is usually savings. A lot of people would also use their salary. Um, current earning status, um, public sector employment. You'll go ahead, um, put in your tax. Via also, you can put in a US tax number or you can say your yeah, other tax number for instance if you in Germany you can put in your tax number for Germany and whatnot so they do account for that bank info you'll do to transfer money out so you don't have to fill this in immediately from the get-go but if you want to fee your account as soon as possible and have everything working top notch i suggest you just do this they are very secured and safe so don't stress about it you have to verify your account details um, if you want to withdraw funds other than that there's not much more you can do and your account will be set up usually what happens is once all of these details are in they'll tell you thank you for verifying and they'll get back to you with your account activation so what you can go ahead and do in the next 48 hours while you wait is you can start playing around with your paper trading account. I'm going to show you the paper trading section first. So you can click here at the top on invest now and you can click on the demo czar if it's not selected. And then as you scroll down here, you can see the different investment types. So we'll go through and I'll definitely make a video on what equities are, the ETFs, ETNs, baskets, bundles, and all those things. And then over here at the bottom, um, you can just click on all and then here you'll see all the investment types that and stocks and whatnot you can invest in. I'll give you category tags. So this top 40 is the top 40 companies or stocks in South Africa. You can go specific into a industry, vehicles and parts, banks, beverages, whatnot. You get the idea. And yeah, so then you can go down here and you can look at the different stocks. And a little hint for a company that I'm going to be telling you guys about 
a bit later is this one over here so might as well just get right down to it um, so now process is a subsidiary company their parent company is naspas um, naspas is south africa's biggest jc listed company at the moment but i'll tell you more about that at the end of this video so stick around for that just a quick rundown so over here it shows you the history stock price you can hear so as i told you guys the nice thing about easy equities and the ability for them to give you almost no cost whatsoever is the fact that they do trade at a 15 minute delay and that's why these three prices are here now a little pro tip whenever you look at a stock you want these three prices not to differ too much because it refers to the liquidity so that just means how much are these stocks in demand and when you sell your stock will it be sold will the order be approved soon and quick or will that order be lagging and waiting and then the risk of that is if there's a lag in your order you might risk selling your stock at a different price than you initially intended for these two buttons at the bottom you can click on our research which is easy equities research on these stocks i would definitely say click on the little money web and what it'll do is it'll take you to the money web website where you can see info about the stock new feature they added recently which is very nice is this add to watch list section which you can create your watch list if you don't want to invest in it at this moment and you still want to keep an eye on it click that and you can see it here they already have preset amounts that you can invest in i want to invest that all promised 50 rand amount and you can say it's recurring or once off it'll show you the investment costs these are those expenses that i told you guys about when you invest into a stock that is prices that they get charged that they don't have control over most of the time so yeah that's pretty much the breakdown and i mean guys look at this you are investing 55 rand you are paying 33 cents to invest into this company in the old days that's how much you could have paid for a chappy well, when i did this video i was not on a live account so live account means i'm not trading in stock market hours for the job so then you can say you can now because i'm not in open hours i can say confirm instruction to buy and then what that means is the moment the market opens easy equities receives your order and they'll process it at the earliest stage possible so normally that's like five minutes after the market opens or sometimes immediately but yeah so you guys get the brunt of it you can go to your account overview okay so now here you can see what your profit and loss amount would be what your current value is and here you'll see your accumulated brokerage cost and statutory costs you'll see if you bought a bundle you get the brunt and then the same goes for the demo usd it's exactly the same this demo usd um so obviously you can see this is what i used when i started up and i went quite crazy with it and guys how great would it have been to have made that return from investing fourteen thousand dollars which i don't have but yeah so this is obviously a paper trading account here it shows equities how much you invest in etfs here's that total brokerage costs that i told you about and then here when you click on view holdings it shows you the holdings that you were holding and then it shows you your value the your current value so this is what you paid for it so this is what you bought this is the value it is today and this is the value of every of a share of this company at the moment and yeah so they can get a good idea of what it looks like your account is live or ready to grow your money and you can go to deposits over here it'll show you your account your etf reference i would definitely advise you to do etfs as there are no charges linked to it the moment you go to the credit card um, or the sid option you will start having charges on top of that you can choose the bank from which you will be paying very important guys this etf reference will make or break whether your funds transfer to the right account 
So make sure you get this one right. Yeah, that's pretty much how you're going to fund your account. And you can fund your Zara account. Zara account, you've now put money in. It's showing available. You're going to go to enter account transfer and easy FX. Now, yeah, you're going to choose from your easy equity Zara account. You're going to move it to either your tax free savings. If you move money to your tax free savings account, it is absolutely free no cost to move to your tax-free savings account if you go ahead here and you use your easy equities usd so you want to move from czar to usd easy it's got a flat rate of four dollars and then obviously the value added tax the dreaded value added tax on the fees and it'll show you the final amount and it also shows you the exchange rate at the current moment so let's say we want to move over 100 rand and obviously i'm broke at the moment so i don't have that but it'll show you that's 5.5 usds you pay four dollars 0.67 and then the final amount that will be showing in your account is that so on statements now on statements over here you will see if you click down here easy equities generates a tax certificate for you and you can click download and you can use this to fill in your tax return and under statements, you can, for each of your accounts, get a monthly statement. And it's quite nice. They show you the graph line of how your account was doing. They show you all your transactions. They show you your withdrawals and deposits. They show you everything. So also what I'll be doing is I wrote myself a little Excel sheet that I track all my investments and funds with, which is just a bit more elaborate than the ones they give out here. Um, I do use these sometimes just to check it, but I'll make a video soon and possibly share that with you guys if you are wanting that. Yeah, so for the frequently asked questions, you can go down here, click on frequently asked questions and here you can type in anything. You can even suggest a stock. So will you be adding... Let's do so yeah so there will you be adding more shares and etfs you can click there for instance they'll tell you exactly and then over here you can suggest if you've been looking at some you can suggest new stocks and let's go on back down here you've got guides you've got uh, about easy equities your information deposits account carry all these things i would definitely encourage you go through them and go have a look they pretty much answer everything but yeah guys so i hope this has been enough information for you you want to know so yeah guys that is pretty much it um if you guys have any questions um that you're unsure about drop them down in the comments box and i'll make on my next video, I'll quickly reply to them or I'll directly reply to you. Alrighty, so now that we're at the end of the video, I want to tell you guys, first of all, I'm going to tell you a little um, success I had recently. So... I don't know if you guys have been following the news and whatnot. Recently, it was about two two weeks ago, I think, Intel made a big, a big decision. So Intel manufactures the chips for our laptops and computers, and they were they were the monopoly runners of that industry. Intel, for some reason, delayed their chips. Um, well, I mean, not for some reason, probably because of the pandemic, but they decided to delay one of their chip releases on top of that, to out, they decided to outsource their manufacturing, which obviously in America is a big deal for them. They want everything to be manufactured in America, not outsourced. Yeah, so immediately when I heard that news that Intel was delaying their chips, they were having a little bit of trouble. I immediately looked at what other chip manufacturers are out there and what the competition is, because one, one company's downfall is always another company's opportunity to get into that market and be competition for them 
So guys, one of the biggest tips I can give you, um, I'm probably gonna make a video at one point about five big tips for investing. Always invest in stuff you understand. And if you don't understand it, go do your research. Watch videos like these that explain to you what the industry is about. So luckily, because I do engineering, I understood how the chip manufacturing process works. I understand um, the different types of chips that are out there and what companies actually produce them. Um, so it's very important for you to understand the area so you can make easy decisions and see gaps like these. The three companies that are probably the big names are AMD, Intel and NVIDIA. Now NVIDIA we know focuses mainly on graphics cards. They do have chip manufacturing but literally like 70 plus percent of their revenue comes from their graphics cards. Now AMD also made chips for, for graphics purposes but they've always been trying to compete with Intel to get into the, the, the PC industry of, of chips. And Intel's just always, I mean, how many of us have laptops and it always says Intel i5 or Intel something. Nowadays, AMD came out with their Radeon chips and it's really, they were struggling to get in and Intel just opened the door for them. So immediately what I did is I took a chance, I invested into AMD and today my share price, my stock price on AMD is up 24%, guys. It's crazy. And literally I did it the day I got that news about Intel. And all I did was I said, I know Intel is the front runner when it comes to PC chips. Who's gonna jump in and take that gap? And I saw that AMD and lo and behold, later that day, the news also released that AMD is probably gonna be looking at it. Now for you that don't know, AMD. AMD uses a Taiwan manufacturing um, chip company uh, and I'm going to talk to you about an ETF now that includes them and they also started doing very well. So guys, what I, what I want to share with you is understand the industry that you're investing in and if you don't, go do your research and always look for the gaps. Always ask you, this happened, now what will that affect? For Like in this case, Intel made a, made a statement saying they'll delay their chips. Uh, now you see Intel stock falling and you ask yourself why? Yes, it's because they're delaying, so it's not good for the company, but there has to be something else also. And then you think about, okay, but now how will this help another company? And that comes in with your uh, portfolio diversification. Don't let anyone ever tell you, you can only own one type of stock in an industry. If you are going to invest in tech, don't just own one tech company, own a few or own two, own three. Because if, just because if the whole industry does bad, obviously that's not great. But if one does bad, the other one might still be doing good. So don't, if you invest into Amazon, that does not mean you can't invest into Take Lot also, you know? Just an example that I used. Righty, so I told you guys I'm gonna give you stock tips, stocks that I'm looking at or that I'm probably holding in my portfolio. And let's start off with the JSE. The JSE, Guys, now I'm going to make a video on an ETF, but one of the biggest stocks I would say you definitely should have a look at is the Signia 4th Industrial Revolution ETF. Now they've been doing great things and this specific ETF invests in that whole 4th Industrial Revolution. So the Signia 4th Industrial Revolution has a 0.98% uh, expense ratio. So that means every 100 Rand you invest, they'll take 98 cents per year. So, well, per annum, but per year. for, for like. And how that 0.98% will be taken is at the end of the year, when you've made 7% capital growth on your investment. So let's say you put in 100 Rand. Now you have 107. All they'll do is they'll take that 0 0.9 at fr 98 from that growth that you made. So you don't have to pay them anything with an EFT or bank transfer. It'll just, so what they call it is, you have a price called net asset value and your net asset value will just over that year decrease by that expense ratio. Yeah, so, so it's got a long name. It's the Signia 4th Industrial Revolution, fourth, Signia 4th Industrial Revolution Global Equity Fund. <sighs> So it's a big name. So I'm just going to call it or the Signia ETF for, for now. Signia has a lot of ETFs, but I'm just going to call it the Signia ETF for now. So over the past year, 
the Signia ETF has made has made a 37.2% growth and their benchmark was only 28%. So they've overshot their benchmark. If you, if you go onto Signia's website where you can find those ETFs a uh, little fact sheet, they always call it a fact sheet, and you can see exactly what the the history, the past growth of this um, stock or this ETF is, what the expense ratio is, what their investment strategy is, and how it works. Um, I'm very sad the Signia ETF recently, so when I invested in it, they had 0.8% shares in, in Tesla of their total ETF, and when I went and checked up now again, I see they took it out. Um, yeah, so I'm a, I'm a diehard Tesla fan. I'm going to make a video at I'm going to make a video at some point about Tesla. But let's not get into that right now. Um you can take me on in that video later. Um but yeah, so some of the big companies that the Signia Fourth Industrial Revolution has in it, one of the big ones now are the Oxford um Science Innovations. So they are part of developing uh the vaccine also. They always come up with new developments. Uh they've got Workhorse Group so Workhorse Group is a big uh, e electric vehicle company that mainly makes um, like transport vehicles, like little truckies, little buses, um, especially for like um, parcel deliveries. They've got Garmin, we obviously know Garmin. So they also have ST Microelectronics, which is the company that manufactures a lot of um, chips. Uh, this ETF also holds Microsoft, it holds Apple, it all holds Zoom and it holds Google. So it's really, it's, it's all these companies really pushing innovation, pushing development into the fourth industrial revolution. So it's a great ETF. I'm going to make a video soon about portfolio diversification and what better way to diversify your portfolio than this. And the great thing is you can buy this with your South African rands and immediately you have access into these USD based stocks. So here in the start, if you're a bit iffy about transferring your funds from ZAR to USD, don't worry, you can still get into the USD market via the, this ETF. Then a USD ETF that I absolutely love. Like uh, I honestly believe this ETF is the new thing and it's probably going to be one of the best ETFs you can ever have in your portfolio. I really, I admire this portfolio manager, Kath uh, Catherine Wood. Uh, people just call it Kathy Wood. So do yourself a favor, like or go Google podcasts, go Google YouTube videos, just go watch stuff on Kathy Wood and how she talks about the stocks in her ETF. It's really, so this ETF is ARC Innovation ETF. It's all about innovation technology. It's all about innovation. Uh, it's all about tech that will change the world. And they are one of the front runners that believe that automation will be the next big market. And I also believe that we are moving to autonomous living and they, she's really capturing all those companies with this one ETF. And amazingly, this is one of the few ETFs. So it's normally an ETF is passively managed where this one is actively managed, which is great. So you've, you're pretty much paying for a financial investor that's handling a mutual fund for you, but for the cost of an ETF. And their expense, their expense ratio is only 0.75%. It's less than the previously mentioned passively managed um, ETF. Some of the main holdings of this ETF is obviously my favorite Tesla. They've got um, shares in Square, which is a major paying company. It's like, it's, it's online paying, it's virtual paying, um, and they're also embracing crypto kind of, Cryptocurrency, crypto, who cryptocurrency? They've got Proto Labs, which is a company you send their, them your designs. So if you can operate AutoCAD or Inventor or whatever, and you design something, you can send it to them, and they can manufacture your part or your design via three D printing, whether it's metal, whether it's, whether it's plastic. So they're really going into that whole fourth industrial revolution thing again but just in this ARK ETF. The ARK ETF's net asset value over the past five years are 29.11%. Um, in the past year, they've made a 48.99% net asset value. That means if you put your money in, after a year, it would have grown 49%. Compared to the S&P 500 and the MSCI World Index, the ARK ETF by far 
like Beats, the S&P 500, and the MSC World. And like, that's crazy if you look at it. Like, that graph alone should just make you want to push your money into there first. One of the, one of the main stocks they hold is obviously Tesla. They've got, they've got Square, they've got Roku, they've got Proto Labs. And uh, from the Signia ETF, Apple is a really good stock in my opinion uh, to have at the moment. And while I said my opinion, please guys remember, this is just my opinion. This is what I look at. This is like some of the stuff that I really like and you can take it or leave it. I'm not telling you to do it, but you can do it if you want. Okay, and then a JSE stock, so not an ETF, a proper stock that I would look at. And yes, I know Mr. Trump did some funky business, some funny business lately um, with this company, but I would definitely do research into Nasdaq and Proces. So Nasdaq was the parent company of Proces, and what happened was Proces decide or Nasdaq decided to split and give um, Proces the ability to manage mainly their the internet uh, sector and Proces holds the biggest part of the or holds the Tencent company that Nasdaq invested in initially. Now, for those that of you that don't know, Tencent is a major is a major internet based and a tech company um, of China. They mainly own WeChat in in China and WeChat in China they use for communication. They use it. For payments like we use Snapscan and Zap and all those, um, they owe, they have shares in pretty much all the gaming sites like um, Blizzard, Activision, Epic Games. They have shares in Fortnite, so they've got their fair share everywhere. But now, obviously, Mr. Trump went and banned it in the USA, so their shares dropped a bit. But luckily, Tencent does not focus mainly for South for American based. They are mainly based in their China, so they're good. And Nasdaq is South Africa's biggest company on the JSE. And also guys, I'd always say for beginners, get your dividend portfolio growing as soon as possible. And for that reason, when I refer to you to a USD stock, look at waste management. Their ticker is WM. So they, I mean, even during this pandemic, what do people still produce? Waste. Whether you're in a pandemic, whether you're in a recession, whether the the world's doing great, you're always going to be producing waste. So there'll always be a need for waste management. That's why this company is great. Their dividends are amazing. And I would definitely look into that. Go do your research and look if you want to invest into a company. It's not the most bougie stock you can own. I mean, it's, it's waste management. But, I mean, it's a robust, it's a durable stock. Their prices aren't enormously high. I mean, their dividend per share at the moment is $2 per, per share. So, and that's it guys. That's how you sign up to Easy Equities. Play around on the side a bit. And I'm definitely going to show you guys. So when you go through it, you'll see there's a little bar called Easy Properties. I'm definitely going to make a video about Easy Properties where I'll tell you guys about that. You can not only be an equity and a, uh, an equity investor, you can always be also be a property investor via this platform, which is amazing. You know, it's just great. But don't worry, I'm going to show you also uh, some of the sites I use, some of the tools I use to to make my investments. All I want to do with this video is just to get you onto the platform so that when we have our discussions, you can quickly run to Easy Equities and go do your investments. So. Thank you very much again, guys, for watching and sticking around with me. If you guys have any tips and pointers for making my videos a bit better, I am learning as I'm going along. Um, I'm recording on my phone and I've got this wonky table going here. But in any case, so if you guys have any tips, if you guys have any suggestions you want me to do, drop it down in the comments box. And please go hit the like button and go hit the subscribe button, you know, and even if you don't want to see my videos pop up just go do the subscribe thing you know just just do it just just do it take your mouse and just don't be suspicious don't be suspicious click okay cool, cool, cool. and i'll see you guys in the next video thank you very much guys bye